Okay, so what can we see here? We've got six of those band power supplies from the 1980-81 era, the ones that were banned over safety issues. Um, Radio Cruncher was doing the Burmec one, and you can see there's one there with a two-pin uh, Continental plug dangling off it. And I bought that in as a good worker, just in case he didn't find out what the Zener ever was, because that's that should be all right. So we'll be dismantling that and making sure what the Zener is. Now we've got a forthcoming project coming, and the idea is we're going to go through a pile of these power supplies in lots of parts. And I'm going to dismantle one of the uh, worst ones, right down to bare board level. We're going to replicate the board, we're going to make a brand new printed circuit. We're going to build one of these from scratch with modern safe components, because it's a good circuit and it's a reliable power supply. It was banned on safety issues, not on the fact the electronics is no good. Meanwhile, I've just had an email from a gentleman wanting to know what the AC output of the transformer is. I think it's about 26 volts, and he's talking about the 3 to 5 amp one. So what I'm just going to do, we'll take that off onto the bench, and we'll just have a look and see how many volts that is. And then I'll do exactly the same with the um, with the other version, the Burmec version, or whatever the, the 5 amp one is. We'll just check that voltage. That will help him and it'll also start this little ball rolling with us rebuilding one of these power supplies and building one from scratch. Okay, so we've got the, th I've just mentioned we've got the background music speaker right by me here, so uh, uh, sorry about the racket. Um, so that's a Power Plus 3 amp one. So it's the PP1203GS. There's loads of different brands use this name. This will have been bought in as a worker off eBay for top whack money, and it's part of my future demonstration. So we'll be doing the capacitors on this, and we'll be going through, uh, what is it, BDW21, a bit like Tango21. But what the other gentleman wants to know is, what's the output of this transformer? And as you can see, it's all unshrouded, so we've still got the safety concerns on this one. So I'll just plug it in and we'll get a, a meter on it. So as you can see, it's now on. So with the, oh, you get an RS test meter in this room. So with a quick check of the output, it's doing 13.7 volts. And just, to, just for the check, across that Zener, 14.8, I've got the probes the wrong way around. But just from the gentleman who wants to know about the AC, let's just see what comes out of the transformer. So the primer is there, so I'll be careful not to touch it. It's centre tapped on this. Oh, well it's higher than I thought. So it's 32, 33 volts across there, but it's centre tapped, so what have we got? Ah, 16.4 uh, between the purple wire and the centre. And 16.4 across the other purple wire and centre. I thought it was going to be about 26 volts, but it's 30... 33.5. So you've got two 16 and a halves, so... The gentleman was hoping it was going to be about 17 volts, and in fact it is. So it's across the centre tap and one. So I'll just I'll turn it off actually. So you see you've got the purple wire, the black wire, the purple wire. So across the two purple wires we've got 33 volts. And between black and either of the purple we've got 16 and a half volts. So we're going to do the same now on one of the 5 amp versions. So moving on to this 5 amp version which like um, Radio Crunches is the 1205GS, and this is under a KB brand. This has the, the unsafe fuse holder on it, which leaves the fuse, normally, leaves the fuse like that because it hasn't got a captive cap, as you can see. And then that's connected to live, so the reason this, one of the reasons these were banned is because that's live if that cap comes off. You only need a child to take that cap off and that's live and they're gone. 
Remember, if you're not watching this in the UK, it's 230 volts in the UK. This has a three core mains lead, but some of these had a two core mains lead. So I'll just whip the lid off this and we'll check that voltage on this one. So it's a nice dusty example and the Zener I can't get to. So that would have to have the board taken out. And because there's corrosion on the series pass transistor there, I can't read that without cleaning it up. It's something we'll probably put through the dishwasher. Anyway, back to the voltages. Of course, I don't know whether this is a worker. Uh, so we'll switch it on. Well, it looks like it is a worker. I bought these off eBay, but you know, one at a time, but they were the, the top whack money. Anyway, they're going for 30 quid in any state these days. So what, we've got 40 volts, a bit high, that needs... Yeah, that does, that needs looking at. Um, don't know what it is offload, I'm not interested. But to answer the gentleman who's queried the AC volts coming out of the transformer, it's a similar arrangement. We've got the purple, the black, the purple, we've got the three wires there. And I would think it's going to be a similar scenario with 33 volts across there. Is that what we said? Let's go into that range. It's so dirty, it's very difficult to get in the test press onto it. So 34 volts across the two purple wires or violet wires and between centre and one we've got 16.9 and between centre and the other if we get that connection again sixteen point nine. Yeah, so it's more or less seventeen volts, isn't it? And 30, 33, 34 across the the full output of the secondary. So hopefully that answers somebody else's question. It also introduces uh, viewers to what we're doing with these power supplies in the future. They're going to get rebuilt. I said when the plan is to build a brand new one, um, and I'm going to be using the five amp circuit, but with a three amp transformer. So we'll be building a three to five amp power supply, but with this kind of size and with that circuit, because I think the uh, to say that the three amp one is three amps, it's thrashing it because the three amp diodes, I don't like to see things thrashed like that, but they have lasted, they've stood the test of time, and that's why it's worth doing a project. Our wholesaler is wanting 59 pounds for a linear power supply that's five amps these days. And you know, gone are the days when these kind of things were nine pounds 99. And the, the the switch mode power supplies, to my mind, are so problematic. I've had years of experience on switch mode power supplies, starting in the early 70s with television sets with them. And uh, I mean, I, I've got a scanner, and uh, I'm talking about a flatbed scanner for, for the computer. And as you know, I work as a church organist, and I needed to scan a hymn to play that very day from a hymn book I knew wouldn't fit on the music desk of the organ. And I switched on my scanner one day, it was a, it was like a week and a week and a year old, just out of warranty, and the blooming power supply blew up, didn't it? So I had to kind of jerry rig it to have a 15 volt supply, or whatever it needed, and and the power supply wasn't rebuildable because those switch mode power supplies usually it's a whole avalanche and the thing blows up. So we stick to linear power supplies, and uh, and that's why we're going to be doing this uh, multi part project in the future. Anyway, I've slotted this video in between the PNI 9001 and the on-the-air test for the PNI 9001. So I hope you enjoy what we're uh, having. And uh, I'll say hello to uh, Radio Cruncher's dogs without there being either a, a wallow, said quietly, or a one kilohertz tone. Thanks for watching.